Hello, I'm going to fade in here. There's our lesson for today. We're at, uh, we're taking the pre-calc flipped classroom on trig functions and the date is uh, 9-10, it will be, when you watch this, which will be a Thursday evening. So 9, 10, 15, pre-calc trig functions. So title your comp book with those parameters and we'll get started. We're in the throes of the flipped classroom, working very hard uh, as every day in class and watching the lesson at home. Please uh, make note that I am showing you things on the videos at night that you will need for the next morning to do your work in class. So make sure that you have a pretty good handle on what the examples are that I've shown you. So you can turn the video off and uh, rethink some of the things I've said or go back and, and review and so forth. Make sure you take excellent notes because you need those to get started on your work the next day. Especially those examples are going to help you. All right, we become real trig students today because we are going to learn or relearn. You should have been introduced to them a little bit in Algebra 2 and, and also in Geometry. But I'm going to start from scratch and refresh our memories on the trig functions. There are six trig functions and we're going to learn all six of them today and use some special triangles to come up with additional values. Before you use any trig function, you have to understand that you have to have a right triangle. So a right triangle is the basis of a lot of trig. So we're going to start with a right triangle and we're going to name some sides. The side across from the right angle in a right triangle is the hypotenuse. I'll just uh, symbolize it like that, the hypotenuse. And if I can talk about trig functions in relation to this angle or this angle, but not in relation to the right angle. So I picked this angle and I called it theta. I could have called this angle theta and it would have been fine. It would have been peachy keen to do that. So let's just go with this one, and if this is the angle that I've chosen, this is still the hypotenuse because it's still across from the right angle. But the side opposite that angle, straight across the way there, I'm going to title it, mm, I think I'll call it side opposite. So I'll just call it, put the word, well, I'll be fancy here, side opposite. And this one, right next to it, is side adjacent. Adjacent means next to. So you can see that this side is right next to the angle, and this uh, side is a, the opposite of the angle. So it's very important that you understand the names of the sides before we define the trig functions. Let's look at, let's turn the angle or the triangle a different way to show you it's all relative. Suppose the right angle was in this position and the theta that I choose is this one. So I could have chosen this one and that would have been peachy keen, but I decided that I wanted this one, so there. This side is the hypotenuse. Before I tell you, identify what you think side opposite is. It's going to be relative to the angle that I've indicated. So side opposite is across the way. Right here is side opposite. And this is side adjacent, which we'll often use those symbols. All right, let's go ahead from that same triangle and change things around. I'll try to keep that in view and same triangle and now I'm going to do the rename these sides in relation to this angle this is the right angle still so this is still side of uh, the hypotenuse side opposite now is over here opposite the angle and this is the one near this is side adjacent so notice that these change places when I changed my angle of reference 
All right, now that we have the names of the right, the sides of the right triangle down, we will go ahead and define the trig functions. The first one is pronounced sine. Its abbreviation is S-I-N, but it is pronounced sine, not sin. There's no sin in our class. Well, I'm sure there is, but I'm not teaching it. So the the symbol or the brief the abbreviation SIN is still pronounced sine and sine of an angle, sine of theta, and that will equal opposites the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So if you knew the length of the opposite, <coughs> like up here on this one, if you knew this, the length of the side opposite and the length of the hypotenuse and you divided them, you would have the sine of that angle. And in the next one is cosine, and its abbreviation is COS, and it's pronounced cosine, not never cos, but cosine, and it's adjacent side adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Tangent is the next one. Its abbreviation is tan, T-A-N, tangent of a theta, and it is opposite over adjacent. So you can see that all of these trig functions are ratios. Now that's three, and I promise six, so I will not disappoint. It turns out that this can stand on its head, and this can flip, and this can flip, and we have another trig function when we do that. When we flip the sine function, we get the cos cosecant, and its abbreviation is CSC theta, and it is hypotenuse over opposite. Notice it's just the inverse of we're going to flip this one to get this one. Uh, cosines, its inverse is secant. Its abbreviation is SEC, secant of theta, and it is hypotenuse over adjacent. And tangent is, uh, its inverse is cotangent. Its abbreviation is cotan, or C-O-T, C-O-T, pronounced cotangent of theta, and it is adjacent over opposite. Oops, come back. Adjacent over opposite. So these are the six trig functions, and we will be committing them to memory. And for now, just get them down and get comfortable saying them and observing them, and we'll get better with memorizing them will actually be required, but you'll be given, uh, you know, adequate notice before I do. All right, so let's do an example, and I'll give you a right triangle, and let's say this side is three and this side is four, and the angle that I'm going to do and be referring to is that angle. So I was wondering, and I'm sure you were as well, what's the sine of that angle? Well, up here we learned that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so side opposite is easy to, to find. It's four, let me actually write down the words, opposite over hypotenuse. So side opposite this angle is four, but what's the hypotenuse? It's not given. Well, it is a right triangle, and given two legs, we can come up with the hypotenuse with the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals the hypotenuse squared, or C squared. And so that's 9 and 16. 25 equals the hypotenuse squared, so the hypotenuse is 5. When you take the square root, you find the hypotenuse to be 5. So I'll go ahead and write that in, and now I can go back and finish. The sine of that angle then is opposite over hypotenuse, 4 fifths. Cosecant is the flip of that. It's going to be hypotenuse over opposite, so it's just going to be 5 over 4. Cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So see if you can write that in, what you think uh, the cosine of the angle is before I do. It's going to be side adjacent, which is 3. It's the one adjacent or next to the theta. 3 over hypotenuse of 5. Then the flip of that is co um, is secant of theta, which is going to be 5 over 3. And the last two are tangent of theta, which is opposite over adjacent. In our example, side opposite is 4, adjacent is 3, 4 thirds. And cotangent is of the angle is going to be the flip of that, 3 over 4. All right, so you did your first or the first of as of recent at least in recent times you've done the first tree problem finding the sine cosine tangent cosecant secant and cotangent of this angle very good all right i'm going to do a part two here and i'll be right back with you